This is the Henzo OG. This is a classic Henzo Gracie old school technique where you were operating the arm and guillotine from the closed guard. The difference is going to be instead of using this traditional grip, we the left hand grabs the right hand, the right arm being the one that's attacking the neck. This will only allow your back to be involved in the move. It's a very easy grip to get, but as you get a guy that knows how to behave within inside the closed guard or actually in the attack itself, it becomes very difficult to finish without some other surrounding techniques to reinforce this. So what I'm sharing in the MTG2 project is to do what many uh, students of the craft do and teachers, this inverted palm to palm that's usually a high elbow guillotine, but to actually attack the arm and guillotine using this grip so you can engage your chest and your back at the same time. This shape is as such that we reviewed from the first module of the project. If it's uncomfortable for you, the idea guys in that squashing pyramid shape, your hands are just clasped together as such. Your hands are gonna spin like this so that we get a big ball shape to happen. And what it's gonna do is gonna lock into the side of the opponent's neck and then what you wanna do is rotate your chest to make the space smaller. If you lean back, you may have an opponent actually uh, get their head free. So what I do in all these techniques is once I make my entry and fence in for this inverted palm to palm, I rotate my chest towards the opponent's head and it really fences them further into the strangle and makes them surrender. So I'm gonna take a look at this now, detail by detail, and even go over some surrounding ideas that can help project further threats to the opponent, okay? So as I have somebody that possibly took me down or just knows how to behave within the closed guard, he may understand this idea that if he stays squared up with me, he essentially kills all my angles. And likewise, I don't want to just surrender my closed guard because an opponent is doing this simple but effective technique of squaring up inside the closed guard. So what this will look like if I try to get an angle, he just adjusts with me, and from here, you can follow me at your legs. Every time I try to make an angle move, my opponent just follows me. And in an MMA format, that's when you start getting a lot of strikes occurring during the squaring up process and forces your head back, which allows for even bigger strikes to occur. So from here, I'm gonna also try to enter my hands to get underneath my training partner, but he's keeping his elbows fixed to my body, and his hands are on my biceps. So essentially, I can't go over and I can't get in front of them to force some type of activity or generate some space for me to begin working against them. So what I'm gonna do is play a strategy like this where I keep the closed guard closed and I'm gonna get him to follow my hands up as I bridge my hips up like this. And once I've done this, I've got him to overextend himself and now I'm gonna shoot for a 45 degree angle and get up over his shoulder and my left hand is gonna trap his wrist as his fingers are gonna get trapped as I sit up fast like this. And what's gonna happen, guys, I now have an easy Kimura set up on my training partner. This will cause a lot of guys to do this counterbalance where they try to protect this arm and bring that body down. It now puts his head in a really easy guillotine range as such. So you can go for a great Kimura attacks here by just peeling the elbow and starting to hit the escape out to the side and have a really strong capture. But we want to get this guillotine to work, but it's really important that you guys project multiple threats on your opponent. So once you dial in your guillotines, explore some of these surrounding shapes for actually accessing the Kimura, okay? So from here, I'm trying to get it, some type of work going on my opponent. I'm going to then bridge my body up with the closed guard, and what I'm going to breathe as I sit up, so I can make a really strong fit in. From here, I have a wrist control, which will usually force most opponents to protect their elbow here and put it back where it was during the closed guard transition. This is a really important idea next, guys, okay? It's gonna be a constant throughout the project. If you just use the top portion of your bicep here to enter a fast guillotine, it's, there's a lot of freedom of uh, the muscles in the back and the neck here. If you begin getting a fixed position against your training partner or opponent and actually retract your arm it's like taking the slack out of a jujitsu gi. The, the position gets really tight on them. The inside of my arm is much bigger than this top portion of my bicep. So this is something I do when I'm strangling people so that I'm not maxed out and begin hurting myself while trying to squeeze them. 
I'll retract my bicep so it has, helps expand the bicep. And I do a thumbs down technique like this. Once you bring your arm out to the side and do this thumbs down, you're always gonna be able to just move your hand towards your rib cage and it will always find the opponent's neckline. So I'm gonna have Steve rotate with me in a second. You can see what I'm referring to. As I have the closed guard here and I do this retracting of my bicep and put the thumbs down, I'm not gonna look that way. I still wanna project the Kimura over here as if it's a threat and or if I wanted to possibly sweep to the top mount position. That's what's gonna help make an opponent stay low and fixed in the position here. And what'll happen is, as you're here trying to do this, it makes them fit in right underneath your armpit really well. You retract this and go thumbs down. And right off the entry, we're gonna open the guard briefly while keeping pressure so we can spin right into the guillotine trap like this. I got my opponent's head to the floor so I know where he is. That's gonna be my fulcrum for the technique. And now this hand is gonna move in, thinking with the forearm so I can actually make a strong hand connection. Don't think with your hand, think with the forearm, okay? I'm gonna fence my hand in so it goes as deep as can be, and I get to right to the inverted palm to palm. From here, I keep my feet crossed, and now I'm not gonna lean back where Steve or my opponents could possibly pop their head out. I wanna do this where I rotate my chest towards the opponent, and capture an instant surrender. It's a tremendous amount of pressure to the trachea and on the strangle once you do this. There's only so much you can try to move your own arm in, but there's a lot of slack we could take out on the side of the opponent's neck, okay? So this idea about rotating your chest into somebody so your chest projects into the technique and assist the strangle, okay? Hold the choke hold. So one more time. I have an opponent who's blocking me here. I'm trying to get some action going. I'm giving them feedback as if like I'm not being able to be successful. I'm gonna arch up, make a strong fit in. And now from here, I'm just gonna bring my arm back, get his head to the ground, capture the arm and guillotine, inverted palm to palm. And now I just bring my chest towards his neck and it becomes a very easy capture and surrender.